11 Chapter 11 You are listening at NovelFull.audio I clearly remember her. She was one of the main female leads of the book. Wait, wasn't she working as a professor? Act was trying to wrap his head around this unexpected person. He knew that he would eventually meet the characters of the book but he never thought it would be this early. For now, let's keep my interactions with her as minimal as possible. He sighed with a thoughtful look. Act had no desire to mingle up with one of the main leads and potentially make a massive change in the root of the story. The last thing he wanted was for the butterfly effect to come to bite him in the ass in the future just because of these characters. With that in mind, he listened attentively to what she was about to say. After everyone calmed down, Scarlet then spoke loudly while looking at everyone. The appraisal for this year won't change much from before. Behind me is the door where each one of you will discover his affinity. Then, you will pass to another room where you will unlock your gift. Take in mind that the chances of you not awakening for any affinity are not slim. Any questions? Yes. What's the best element to have? A man shouted from the front. The question didn't seem offending but it made Scarlet angry for some reason. Her expression became even colder and she glared at him. Every element has its strong and weak points, it's how you use it that makes the difference. Any other questions? No one spoke after that harsh attitude so Scarlet continued, we will call your name in order. Wait for your turn patiently and refrain from fighting here or you will be automatically disqualified. After dropping those words she walked away leaving the candidates alone. They were still infatuated with her even with her cold attitude and some were even blushing while looking with listless eyes, they were probably having some wild fantasies. A few moments later, a loud voice echoed in the room announcing the name of the first candidate. It was a woman in her thirties who looked forgettable. She walked in with hesitant steps before closing the door. Everyone watches the door attentively. A few minutes later, the door opened again and the same woman came out with a sad look and a trail of tears in her eyes. Everyone watched her walk straight toward the exit without uttering a word. Everyone knew. She failed. Then, another name was called, this time it was a young man. His face grew paler when he heard his name but he still walked to the door and entered. A few minutes later, the same thing happened and the young man returned with a sad look, not daring to look at anyone. This scene continued for some time, many entered and exited the room with the same hopeless expression that spilled out their thoughts. They had just witnessed their dreams shatter into bits and pieces in front of their eyes. Act didn't bother with them and leaned on a wall chewing on a fruit he brought with him. He could see why this test was brutal. Only those who were lucky enough to be awakeners have the right to take the test. A few hours passed quietly and the number of people in the room became scarce. There were a handful of cases where people didn't come back but that number paled in comparison to the number of failed candidates. Finally, the voice that was calling names for a long time spoke, Candidate 654, Act. Act then stood up and walked leisurely toward the door. The eyes of the people left kept on chasing him until he disappeared inside the room. There, he found himself in a small and empty room. There were a few people there including Scarlet. There was also a pedestal in the center of the room with a ball made out of glass in the center. Please put your hand on the ball. If the ball shined then you have the capabilities to awaken your soul. If it doesn't, then you are unfortunately incapable of continuing this test. Said Scarlet with a flat tone. She didn't show any reaction when she saw a small kid enter. Okay. Then, Act approached the ball and put his hand confidently. He already awakened his soul so he wasn't worried about that. He was, however, eager to know what kind of element affinity he had. The moment his hand touched the ball, a clear white color illuminated the room. You're eligible for the awakening, congratulations. Keep your hand on the ball. Spoke Scarlet. Act followed her word and after some time another change happened, the white color started disappearing. Then, the white light was replaced with a violet hue. 
the violet light kept on getting stronger and stronger until everyone had to squint their eyes from the strong light. Is this normal? Thought the boy with a complicated look. He was worried about what kind of prank Livia did on him to make him suffer. After a few minutes, the ball finally started dimming before returning to normal completely. The boy's eyes shifted to look at Scarlet who was weirdly silent through the whole process. Much to his surprise, she had a whole different reaction than he thought. Her eyes were widened with deep shock as she gazed at Act. From that look alone Act knew it. This is going to be a huge pain in the ass. A lost element, impossible. He heard her mutter with the same shocked look. She had never seen something like this before. Is there a problem? Asked Act warily. His question woke her up from her shock and made her shake her head. N.N.O., ahem, the element you have the most affinity with is, gravity. Gravity, dot, yes, gravity. It's quite rare and strong, be proud. She said with a forceful smile. Gravity, ha. Huh. It seems from her reaction that this isn't just a, rare, element. I need to know more. He thought with a neutral expression. You can head straight to the second room. After he left the room, Scarlet looked at one of the people present and said, Get me every information you know about him. I don't want anyone to find out about his element. Yes, young miss. The man shouted before running away. He had no time to waste or his miss would get angry. A young kid with an affinity for a lost element. Who is he? She thought as she looked at the door silently. This was the moment when Scarlet's interest in this mysterious young man ignited. An interest that will change her future and Act's future forever. Meanwhile, Act, who was oblivious to what he got himself involved in, found himself in another room that resembles the previous one. This time, however, there was only one single person sitting at a table smoking a cigarette and looking at nothing in particular. Oh, welcome. I've been waiting for the arrival of someone for a while now. The man spoke with a small smile the moment he saw Act. Are you the one who is going to unlock my gift? Act ignored his words and cut straight to the chase. Ha ha ha, yeah, it's me. Now, come closer. The man laughed it off and kept his small smile plastered on his face. Act approached him until he was only a few inches away. Then, the man extended his hand and touched Axe's chest. It's going to hurt slightly. Don't resist my powers. Then, he channeled his soul force to his arm and straight inside Axe's body. He felt a strong wave of energy paralyze his body as if he was electrocuted. The pain was high but tolerable with Axe's strong will. He just clenched his teeth slightly without showing any apparent change in his expression. We're almost done. The man said. Then, an even stronger energy invaded his body and the pain intensified even more. Yet, Act kept his stoic face not even allowing a groan of pain to come out of his mouth. And that's it. You have unlocked your gift. You can now use it properly, just think of the name of your element and you should be able to activate it. The man said with a smile as he pulled his hand away. Okay. Where should I head now? The door is over there. It will lead you back to the reception. They will explain everything else. Act looked at his hand briefly before shaking his head and walking away. He wanted to try his gift but he scratched that idea. It could end up with a disaster. I will try it when I am alone. I hope you enjoyed the chapter. Don't forget to support this book. Thank you and have a good day. 12 Chapter 12 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Act returned to the reception lounge, the place was considerably emptier now and even those who were not there for the test had already left on their missions. The boy didn't idle much and went straight to the receptionist. The woman was surprised to see him back. Welcome again, did you pass the appraisal? She asked with a smile. Act nodded briefly without saying anything. Well. Congratulations. You have passed the first phase of the examination. Now, for the real test. 
As you may or may not know, the hunter examination is a yearly test that is held on one specific date. The place of the test is different each year and so are the components of the test. So, please refrain from thinking that it would be the same as the year before or any other year. Understood. He said as noted her words in the back of his head. Good. The test for this year will be held in the capital city of the lower world, Lagradon. As for the date, it will be exactly 35 days from now. Lagradon. That's where the story of the book started. He pondered. It was a massive city that held all the power in the lower world and was considered the shining star of this place. That's why most of the powerhouses of the lower world were Lagradon. He thanked the receptionist and left the Hunter Association's branch. A lot of things happened inside, the most important, however, is his gift. Gravity seems to be very strong. From one look alone, anyone will think that it's a great gift with no disadvantages or weak points, but that's most likely a wrong assumption. I need to find its weak points first and then learn how to control it properly. Act passed through the main street walking leisurely. He was searching for a place to stay for the time being. Going to Lagradon will be the last thing he does. Hmm, this should be a good place. He muttered when he saw a luxurious building with a big sign that had, Blue Rise Hotel, on the front. He had enough money to pay for anything at this point, so a few weeks in a five-dot-star hotel is not a stretch by any means. He walked inside, the moment he saw the place, he knew that it was only made for the filthy rich. Almost everything around him was made of expensive material from tables to chairs to even vases of flowers. It was a feast to the eye through and through. Welcome to Blue Rise Hotel, how could I help you? A receptionist called for him with a professional smile. I'd like to book a room for three weeks, is that possible? T.3 weeks. Ahem, are you sure about this, sir? The woman stuttered in response. In all of her time working there, she never met someone who booked a room for more than four days let alone three weeks, and the one who asked this was a child at that. Yes, are there no empty rooms? He asked. Absolutely not, sir. I apologize for my rudeness. We have rooms free for booking. Which tier you'd like the room to be? We have from small rooms up to royal suites. A royal suite. Understood, please wait a few moments. The receptionist's mind was thinking of two single words. Filthy rich. Act didn't bother with her funny expressions and waited patiently for the woman to do her job. A couple of minutes later, the receptionist called him again. Would you mind if you pay in advance? She asked. No problem, how much is that? Twenty-five gold coins. Here. He pulled out exactly twenty-five gold coins from his ring and gave them to her. Here are the keys. Your room is on the last floor, number 986. If you have anything you want to learn about, you could call the reception desk and we will help you to the best of our abilities. Act then left the reception and walked up the stairs. He could have taken the lift but he liked to do some light training on the way up. It took thirty minutes to reach the last floor. It had only three rooms so the place was pretty quiet and empty when Act was about to open his door, the lift made a ringing sound and the door opened. He took a brief look at the person who came to this floor and much to his shock, it was Scarlet Gold Knight. Their eyes locked on each other and no one could say anything. They stood in their places with awkward silence taking over the place. Good evening. Said Act after some time. Good evening. Then he opened the door and entered quickly. What kind of bad luck is this, he thought with clenched teeth. This encounter alone could be more than enough to change the whole future of this world and it had to be in such a stupid way. Calm down, act. I just have to avoid her as much as I can. He took a couple of deep breaths and shook his thoughts away. The royal suite lived up to its name indeed. It was very spacious, with a huge king-dot-sized bed, a beautiful kitchen, a small bar section, and even an indoor pool. 
he had everything he needed and more in that place. Let's see. I should first take a shower, then I should train my gift and do some physical training. Act was a very organized person, he never liked doing things on a whim. It's probably one of the reasons why he became the king of assassins in his previous life. After taking a shower, he sat down in the middle of the living room. Okay, let's see. He said I should think of the name of my element and channel my soul force. He said as he executed his words. He felt the energy accumulate in his hand gradually. But this time, it didn't just stop. The energy started diminishing and he felt as if something was out on his shoulders. The weight wasn't strong but it was more than enough for Act to notice. Good. Let's try to change the area of effect, he thought with a small smile. He looked at a pillow on the couch and tried to apply a stronger gravity to it. At first, nothing changed but after waiting for a few moments the normal pillow started changing form as if it was getting squished by a heavyweight. This is really good. But, it's very slow and it also consumes a lot of energy. He pondered loudly while looking at his hand. He was happy with the results but he also couldn't ignore the glaring flaws in his power. The sluggish use of his power could be solved with continuous practice, but the big consumption of energy is what is bothering him. Wait, could I still absorb energy from the atmosphere around me? The book said that after awakening the only way for anyone to break through soul levels is to consume soul force from other creatures. But, that goddess should have at least given me some privileges. He was not sure about that idea but he wanted to try, nevertheless. Act closed his eyes and calmed his breathing. The atmosphere around him changed and he started feeling the energy that was floating around him almost instantly. Dot, it's way denser than the slums. Then, he tried accumulating that energy in front of him. Fortunately for him, the energy followed his will, and soon enough a huge ball of energy was floating in front of him. He then tried to merge that energy with his body. The ball approached him and then penetrated his chest. He felt the same feeling as when he awakened. It works, he felt slightly happy with this discovery since it will cut down a lot of problems for him. After absorbing the whole ball of energy, he felt his soul getting stronger by a small amount. It was very minuscule but he didn't get annoyed, he just kept his concentration and repeated the process again and again and again. Hours passed silently while Act was accumulating and absorbing energy like a tireless machine. At some point, his soul that was nourished to the brim with energy started changing, the snow.white color of his soul lost a small degree of its brightness and a hint of orange appeared in the middle and mixed with the white color, he reached level 2. When he was fully done, he opened his eyes and exhaled a deep breath. Concentrating for almost 10 hours straight took a toll on his mind. Even his body was soaked in sweat to show his exhaustion. I felt it. My soul reached level two. He muttered under his breath. He stood up from his place and walked to the shower again. But, knock knock a knocking sound made him halt his steps. I hope you enjoyed the chapter. Don't forget to support this book. Thank you and have a good day. 13 Chapter 13 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Who is it? Act muttered to himself. He didn't order anything from the reception so he was quite wary of this knocking. It could have been one of the candidates that wanted to harm him or I have someone in mind and I hope that I'm wrong. He thought with an exasperated look. He predicted who would knock on him at such a time but he'd rather not open the door. He walked quietly to the entrance without making a noise and looked through the hole in the door. Much to his surprise, it was Scarlet who was standing in front of his room. What am I gonna do with this person, Sai? I should pretend I'm not here and hope she walks away. A small frown appeared on his face and he held his breath. I know that you're standing behind the door. She suddenly spoke with her flat, emotionless tone. Oh, great. He muttered. It could have been a trick from her side to make him open the door but he had a rough idea of how her mind works and he was sure that she wasn't the type to lie her way through things. What do you want, miss? 
He answered without opening the door. Can I have a small talk with you? I won't take much of your time. She said calmly. I have no reason to accept. But, why do I have this feeling that if I don't accept that I will regret it in the future? He held his head with his arm and pondered quietly. A few moments later, he answered, fine, wait a second. The door then opened and Scarlet was finally able to look at act properly. Her cold eyes stared deep into his black irises trying to gauge his thoughts. Act then sidestepped and said in a slightly respectful tone, please, feel free to enter. Thank you. She didn't refuse his invitation and went inside. He then took a look at the corridor one last time and closed the door. Would you like a drink? I don't have alcohol though. He asked as he went to the kitchen. A cup of water is fine. Suit yourself. He took the cup of cold water to the living room and put it in front of her before sitting down. So, how could I help you? He took a small breath and asked calmly. She looked at him with a serious look before speaking, I don't like beating around the bush, so I will cut to the chase. Would you like to join my family? Join your family? Yes. To be honest with you, I lied this morning. Your affinity is not simply rare. You actually have an affinity with one of the lost elements. She said after taking a sip of her cup. Could you perhaps explain what is a lost element? I've never heard of such a term. In the main book, such a name was never mentioned so Act was genuinely intrigued to know more about it. When we first discovered that humans are capable of manipulating the elements around them, there were four of them that stood out as the strongest. Everyone awakened with an affinity for such elements was destined to become a king, a supreme being that could not be opposed. These elements are Space, light, darkness, and gravity. She then paused to collect her thoughts before continuing. A few thousand years ago, a particular event happened that changed this world forever. This event was called the Dissension War. Many races from Ecrasia invaded the three worlds and started a war that lasted over 100 years. It had many devastating effects on the three worlds and one of those effects was the disappearance of these four elements. No one had seen them ever again until this day. You are the only person in records to have one of these elements since that time. She then gazed at Act with a complicated look waiting for his reaction. He, on the other side, kept silent as he digested her words. It seems like I may have underestimated this power. Luckily, I didn't catch the attention of a freak, that, so, this power of mine is a big deal, huh? I get it. But, did you really want me to join your family just because of my talent? I feel like you have another purpose. He responded after a while with a cold gaze. This kid, he's an anomaly. Scarlet thought as she squinted her eyes lightly. She felt like she was talking to a cunning fox that could trick her easily rather than a young boy. You are right indeed. Unfortunately, I can't tell you my goal now since it will do you more harm than good but I can guarantee you a lot of advantages if you join my family. Like what? She made a small gesture with her hand pointing at his body and said, I can see that you were training before I came. You seem like you lack guidance in training your gift. If you join my family, you could be guided properly and even have a training program that could suit your body. You also will have the privilege of entering any monster dungeon under our control. There are many other things but I can see you got what I'm saying. Act didn't show any reaction to her words but deep inside, he was thinking hardly about her words. I could give you some time to tea. I thank you for the proposal but I have to, unfortunately, refuse it. He cut her words. Could I know why? She said without losing her composure. She had this possibility in mind when she came to talk with him so she wasn't surprised by this outcome. While your offer does sound attractive, I prefer to not be shackled by anything. I like to have my own free will and I can see that your family doesn't approve of such ideas. He saw right through her and gave a precise prediction of how her family worked. They may give these privileges unconditionally, 
but that makes them the ones in control of their members' actions. It was a give-and-take deal from the start. Dot. He saw how troubled Scarlet was and he was relieved that he was able to get rid of her this quickly. He changed the future too much with this encounter and he didn't want it to make it worse. If you have nothing else to say there. How about this? You're about to pass through the hunter examination, right? I could train you for the next few weeks before the test. If you don't change your mind until that time then I will give up. What do you think? Did anyone ever tell you that you're a very tenacious person? A lot of times. She said with an almost smiling face. It was an attempt from her to show a smug grin. Sigh, fine. I will accept your offer. I hope you can change my mind in this short time. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, I forgot to introduce myself properly. I'm Scarlet Gold Knight. Nice to meet you. She said as she extended her arm for a handshake. Act. You can call me Act. He accepted her hand and shook it slightly. It may change the future a lot but I can't ignore this free help. She could boost my progress by a huge margin, he thought inwardly. It was indeed a risky move yet Act saw no point in accepting since he could see that Scarlet was very strong. The beautiful red dot haired woman then excused herself after telling him to meet her tomorrow morning for the start of the training. When she left, Act sat down on the couch again with a wistful look in his eyes. He had made many reckless choices today and he didn't know why. He was never someone to take risks no matter how small they were because he firmly believed that stupid choices no matter how small they are could be the demise of one person. No comeback on it now. I had already taken the risk, it either works or not. Show me what you could do, miss the heroine. He muttered before going to take a shower to wash away his sweat and also his worries. The next morning, Act got out of the room and went down to the reception lounge. There, he found Scarlet sitting alone at a table while sipping a cup of hot coffee. Good morning. Good morning. Are you ready? Even though I want to gain your interest in my offer, I will not go easy on you. That's what I'm looking for. He said with a small, cold smile on his face. Good. Then, let's get this out of the way while we are here, you will have to fight me first. I hope you enjoyed the chapter. Don't forget to support this book. Thank you and have a good day. 14 Chapter 14 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Fight you. Act asked confusedly. Yes, you may have one of the lost elements but that doesn't mean you will excel in combat. Knowing how to do something and applying that in real life are two different things. She then took a sip of her coffee calmly and continued, I need to see your weak and strong points. That's why there is no better than a spar to gauge these things. I see. Then, when should we start? He nodded his head before asking again. Follow me. Then, both of them stood up and walked out of the hotel. The city was as bustling as ever. In fact, with the end of the hunter appraisal phase the day before, the number of people in the city increased. Many families and guilds came here to see if there were any potential hunters they could recruit beforehand. This kind of thing happens in basically every city in the lower world, the rivalry between the influential guilds and the weaker guilds alike makes searching for opportunities to become stronger a must. That's why, even though Scarlet was the supervisor of the appraisal, she didn't allow for Axe information to leak since if that happened, every other family and guild would try to get him to their side no matter how they did it. The duo walked in the street for a few minutes before stopping in front of a rather small but well-organized building. The sign on the front said, Blue Rise Training Capsule Center. This is where we will train. This capsule center allows us to simulate all possible cases in a fight including holographic dungeon monsters and other fighting conditions. The perfect place for training. She explained briefly before walking inside followed by ACT. The two then spoke to the worker and rented a capsule for 12 hours. It was quite costly as they had to pay 13 gold coins but they were both swimming in gold so neither of them cared about it. 
When they walked away, the male worker looked at their silhouettes and muttered with an envious look, you lucky brat. Staying for 12 hours with a hot babe like that. The capsules were basically akin to modified rooms that could handle the power of hunters since they couldn't train anywhere or it would be a disaster. They found their room and entered inside. In contrast to how it looked from the outside, the room was the size of a coliseum arena. The ground was made of hard rock and the walls out of some kind of metal. Act whistled lightly as he looked around, he liked the atmosphere of this place for some reason. While he was doing that, Scarlet just started undressing her clothes. She wore a training suit under her normal clothes for this training session but it only worked as an amplifier for her lethal curves and amazing body. She really sees me as a kid. I can't blame her though. He thought with a calm look. He wasn't some lustful kid who would drool on the spot whenever he smelled female pheromones and even if he lost himself in lust, she would be able to erase him out of existence quite easily. Do some light stretching before we start. I don't want you to harm yourself before we even start the training. You're underestimating me too much, Miss Scarlet. He answered with a cold gaze. Oh. I heard that actions work better than words. Show me what you have. We will fight without using soul force or gifts. I want to assess your close combat prowess. Understood. The two then stood facing each other, the difference in height and age made the fight quite weird from an outsider's point of view. I will throw this copper coin and when it falls down, the match starts. She then flicked the coin. It soared for a few meters in the sky before falling down. Both of them watched the coin attentively and the moment it touched the ground, Swish Act rushed towards Scarlet quickly, their distance got closed in a few seconds. He then jumped and kicked with his right leg toward her face. Scarlet didn't move from her place and held her hand to guard against his attack. His leg connected with her arm but neither of them got pushed behind. Act expected this to happen so he landed on the ground and instantly sent a punch to her abdomen. His height didn't allow him to reach any other part of her body. Very good. She said as she sidestepped his punch and barely missed it. She then tried to hit his right elbow when it was extended but Act saw right through it and grabbed her fist with his left hand. Her strength was way higher than Act so he could only hold her for a few moments before jumping behind to make a distance between them. As expected, she's strong. He thought with a small smile on the corner of his face. It has been a long time since he faced an opponent that could make him go all out. He felt his blood boil in excitement as every part of his body filled with endless energy. As for Scarlet, she was quite shocked by act. She expected him to be somewhat decent but she never thought he could be this skilled. For a moment, she even felt like she was fighting an expert. This kid is full of surprises, she could only think so as she took a fighting pose again. Let's continue. She said with a calm tone. Act didn't speak and instantly dashed toward her again. Their fight continued for minutes, they were almost on equal footing with some slight advantage for Scarlet. Their punches and kicks barely missed their targets each time. Act had to use all of his abilities to keep up with her. No matter how much he tried, he couldn't hit her, her speed and accuracy were simply outstanding. If she were living in his previous world, she would have been considered an unbeatable monster. When the fight passed the 10 minutes mark, Act started getting exhausted. His body couldn't handle such intensity for a long time. He could have kept up this rhythm for some more time if he used his soul force but that was not allowed. Thus why, in their last clash, he couldn't dodge one of her kicks and was sent flying before falling to the ground. Are you okay? She asked him. Huh, yes. He said with a breathless voice. His lungs were threatening to explode from lack of oxygen and his heart was overheating from work. Let's take a break. They sat down for a few minutes, none of them spoke and soon awkward silence took over the place. To be honest with you, your power surprised me. You have skills that could rival the strongest of hunters if you had some more power in your body. Can you tell me from where you learned how to fight? She asked without looking at him. 
Her question was logical and Act knew that he would have to answer her sooner or later. That's why he prepared an excuse for such cases. When I was born, my father and mother had to leave because of their work as hunters, but they never came back. They died in Ecrasia. So, my grandfather took responsibility for raising me up. He was also a hunter back in his prime so I made him train me. He said without hesitation. It was a flat dot out lie but he had no other choice. He can't tell her that he was a strong hitman in his previous life and he got reincarnated by a crazy goddess in the body of a small child. He will either be considered crazy or hallucinating. Oh, I see, I'm sorry for your loss. She said with a slightly sad tone. She may have been considered a cold person by many, but Scarlet was a very kind person inside. Her cold expression was something she made to face this cruel world ere the stronger rules and weaker suffer. Act saw through her front and tried to hold back a smile from appearing on his face. He was a cruel and cold person so seeing people like Scarlet was like a breath of fresh air for him. She reminds me of her, he thought as he sighed inwardly. Every time he sits down to relax, his mind will wander back to his previous life. The nostalgia was killing him. Okay, enough with the chit dot chat. Here, take this. She said as she stood up and threw a glass bottle in his direction. What kind of potion is this? He asked as inspected the vial with interest. It's a stamina replenishing potion. It will restore you to your peak condition. You will have to start drinking these until your body gets stronger. She answered while pointing at the potion. I hope you enjoyed the chapter. Don't forget to support this book. Thank you and have a good day. 15 Chapter 15 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Act looked briefly at the green liquid inside the vial. He only heard of these things in games and movies back on earth so seeing them in his hands was amazing. He then opened the bottle and gulped down the whole thing in one swift motion. It tasted like mango juice and it felt really good passing down Axe's throat. I wouldn't be surprised if people got addicted to this stuff. He thought as he felt the potion kick in pretty much instantly. His exhausted body started getting rejuvenated and his sore muscles regained their energy. A few moments later, he stood up and cracked his fingers, and did some minor stretches before saying, let's continue. Good. Now, I have already seen your level. We won't be concentrating on close combat techniques since you seem prominent in them, instead, I will help you train your gift. She said calmly. How are you going to do that? Simple. Our gifts are just like any other skill we try to learn, the more we use them the more we become prominent in them. So, from now on, you will have to use your gift all the time even when you're not training. She explained while holding her huge bust in her arms. It was quite the amazing sight for the sore eye and act secretly appreciated it even though he didn't show it in his expression. She then made a small gesture with her hand and a massive rock appeared out of thin air. She summoned that rock using the capsule's features. Now, I want you to use gravity to lift this rock in the air. This training will end when you can make this rock float for five minutes without falling. Have in mind that this same exercise will also increase your soul force level. She then walked away and took a seat not so far from where Act stood. I see. Okay, let me try. He muttered and extended his arm toward the rock. Then, he started channeling his soul force to its full capacity. The 40 kilograms rock started fidgeting and shaking slightly, then, in one single motion, it started floating in the air. It didn't fly that high, keeping the distance between it and the ground barely a few centimeters. This is hard. It feels as if all of the rock's weight is on my arms he clenched his teeth slightly while trying to keep his full concentration on the boulder. Twenty seconds passed and the rock was still in the air. But, instead of being stable, it was swinging left and right as if it was threatening to fall any second now. Act was starting to shake too, he was on the verge of releasing his power as he couldn't hold on anymore. Expectedly, a few seconds later, the rock regained its gravity and fell down to the ground. 
23 seconds. Not bad for a first try. But, you still have a long way to go. Restart again. Scarlet spoke from the sidelines as she looked at the chronometer in her hand. Yes. Act nodded and wiped the beads of sweat accumulating on his face. The process started again, nothing much changed this time either but Act felt as if he was starting to understand his gift more. It was an incomprehensible feeling for him but he was sure of one thing. He was making progress. His second try ended at 24 seconds, adding one more second over his previous record. Miss Scarlet, my soul force is depleted. How am I going to repeat this many times if I had to wait for my soul force to replenish each time? Don't worry about that, here, take this. She then pulled a ring dot shaped object out of her pocket and tossed it to him. Dot, that's a ring that will speed up your regeneration. Put it on and you will be back fully charged in a few seconds. Luckily for you, you are still a white soul awakener or that ring would have been useless for you. Act took a long glance at the ring before looking at Scarlet. Miss Scarlet. May I know something? He asked with squinted eyes. Mm. Are these objects expensive? I have to be frank here but I don't like owing people great favors so if it's inconvenient for you to give them to me then I have to refuse it. He was genuinely annoyed. Act never owes anyone any favor because that will make him vulnerable and this was not a different case. Scarlet could use this to make him join her family. Scarlet's eyes widened slightly before a smile appeared on her mesmerizing face coupled with a beautiful laugh. It was truly a beautiful sight. Fufufu. Are you worried about me or about yourself? Don't worry, this is not a favor, consider it a part of our deal. This was the first time Act saw her laugh like this and he was surprised by that fact. Fine. But I will say this now since I didn't say it before, I appreciate your help. He responded. No problem. Her face was still smiling softly at him. She was enjoying her talk with him for some reason. Now, get back to training. You still have eleven hours of training. She ordered with a stern face. Act put the ring in his right hand. He waited for a few moments and his soul force was recharged completely. The training resumed and Act kept on repeating the same exercise again and again and again. He only stopped twice to take a break or eat something. Each time he tried lifting the boulder, his proficiency would increase and so did his best record. From 23 seconds, he soon broke the 1.minute mark and then the 2 minutes mark after it. He was getting better and better at an alarming pace to the point where Scarlet couldn't believe her eyes. What kind of monstrous talent is this? He only needed a few hours to be able to use his gift considerably easily. How could that be possible? The hours passed like a flash and they finally ended the 12 hours they had in the capsule. Act reached a stable 3 minutes and 48 seconds as his best record. He was also surprised at his progress but he thought it wasn't that much of a big deal and forgot about it. As they walked out of the capsule, Scarlet said with a weird tone, you had great progress today. Now, from here until tomorrow morning, I want you to increase the gravity of your body to double the normal amount. I want you to keep that for as long as you can each time. Is that clear? Okay. He nodded with a calm look. He wasn't annoyed by her strict attitude, he knew that she was doing that for his own good. They reached the hotel and got separated quickly. Act entered his room and activated his gift. Instantly, he felt his body grow extremely heavy and he almost stumbled on his foot. He weighed 35 kilograms so his legs were now supporting 70 kilograms worth of weight. How am I going to keep my gift working when I fall asleep? He muttered while shaking his head tiredly. After taking a shower and struggling to walk for a while, he went to bed and tried to sleep. As expected, the moment his mind started shutting off, the gravity lessened on his body and he woke up instantly. This is problematic. The whole night passed with him struggling to keep the gift working while also trying to fall asleep. It was a sleepless night for Act. The next morning, 
he met Scarlet in front of her room. She inspected him quietly before trying to talk. Did you know? I didn't sleep the whole night. I couldn't find a way to keep the gravity activated while also falling asleep. He said with a slightly colder tone than usual. He was annoyed at his failure to complete the task. Oh, I see. I wasn't expecting you to succeed from your first night. Making your gift work even while you're asleep is something that takes months and even years of practice to accomplish. I understand. He nodded his head in approval with some lingering frustration in his heart. Never mind that. Did you eat breakfast? She suddenly asked. No, I was intending to do so when I left the hotel. Let's go together then. I have something to tell you. They both then left the hotel and went to the nearest restaurant they found. It was in the same street as the hotel they resided in so it was a pretty extravagant place in its own right. They took seats and ordered their food. After that, Scarlet looked at Act deeply and said after long contemplation. There will be a small change in strategy for today. Why is that? He asked confusedly. I heard that there was a dungeon break near the southern walls of Blue Eyes City. They called me for a little help. It won't be a huge mission so. She then pointed at Act and continued, You will go with me. I hope you enjoyed the chapter. Don't forget to support this book. Thank you and have a good day. 16 Chapter 16 You are listening at NovelFull.audio What about the training plan? Act asked as he took a bite from his food. The place was quite luxurious so the food was top-notch even by his standards. They used some kind of meat he had never seen before. This dungeon break is from a G.Ranked dungeon. Even if things came to the worst case possible, this will only take us one day to complete. So, by tomorrow you should be able to go back to your normal training. She explained calmly. I see. Sure then, I have never fought monsters before and it should be a good experience for me, it sure will be. She nodded her head and continued eating. After their breakfast, they left the restaurant but didn't head straight to the southern walls. They first went to a weapon shop. It was located on the outskirts of the normal parts of the city making it one of the closest shops to the slums. Do you have any experience with weapons like swords and such? She asked when they reached their destination. I know how to use daggers and swords, but I didn't master them. He answered with a contemplating gaze. No one expects you to master a weapon when you're still six or seven years old. She almost blurted out her thoughts at his lack of common sense and sighed inwardly. Let's go in then. You can buy a simple weapon to use. The shop wasn't as extravagant as the other building they entered but it was organized enough to not make people frown. All kinds of swords, bows, and daggers filled the place, and the smell of smelt iron invaded their nostrils. Then, a burly man wearing a black apron and holding a hammer in his right hand came out of the back room and greeted them with a grin. Welcome to my shop, lads. Oh, if it isn't the princess. It's been a long time. He seemed to be the cheerful type of person as the smile didn't leave his face at all. So he was one of her acquaintances, Act thought while looking at the blacksmith. Hi, Galdoff. It's been a while indeed. I would like to choose a weapon for my friend's little brother here. He prefers swords and daggers. Do you have any recommendations? Scarlet spoke while patting Axe's hair. I know this is a part of acting. But is it necessary to pat my head? He thought with slight annoyment. Oh. You seem quite young to be using a weapon, young man. I respect fearless people like you. The man laughed loudly then walked out of his counter and walked to one of the shelves. Where is it? I remember putting it here. He muttered while looking around. Then, he pulled something from the pile of weapons and said, found it. Here, try this one. This short sword is one of my best works. You said you liked daggers and swords, right? This one is a mix between them. 
It gives you the agility of the dagger and the lethal slashes of a normal longsword. He explained with an excited look. Act grabbed the sword of his hand and inspected it. He never used a short sword before but it didn't seem that different from the weapons he knew how to use. Then he walked slightly away from the other two and made a few moves with the short sword. His slashes were fast and beautiful as if he was dancing with the sword rather than normal moves. The other two were mesmerized for a second by this show. He did that for a few moments before stopping and looking at the blacksmith, I will take it. The burly man took a few seconds to understand what he said before smiling widely. G. Good, I will get you the scabbard of the sword from the other room. Wait a moment. Then he came back with a scabbard made out of wood and steel and gave it to Act. He put the sword in the scabbard and then stored it in his ring. How much is this, old man? Scarlet asked. You can take it for free, princess. Consider it as a present for old time's sake. He shook his head as he refused her. Thank you, Galdoff. She appreciated his small gesture even though she could buy hundreds of that sword with the money she had at the moment. The two then left the place and headed straight to the south. They had to pass through a small part of the slums to reach the walls. It was inconvenient but that was the only way since the main road for trading in Blue Rise City connects with the northern wall which was one of the richest parts of the city. What kind of monsters will we fight? They told me that it was a kobold dungeon. And how exactly did this dungeon break happen? When a dungeon is not cleared on regular basis, the sole barrier that keeps monsters trapped inside weakens, and that allows them to get out. That's what we call a dungeon break. Dot. They talked as they passed through the slums. Many people looked at them and especially Scarlet since she was akin to an alien for these people. There were even some arrogant people who tried to stop them but ended up getting beaten up to a pulp in a few seconds. They reached the southern wall in ten minutes. There, they found two guards standing beside the gates looking out for any suspicious person coming from the slums. When they saw Act and Scarlet they paled visibly and spoke with a stuttering voice. M. Miss Gold Knight. The captain was expecting you. Tell him I came. She ordered with a cold look. One of them ran away to a building near the gates and then came back with another man. They wore the same armor but the new face had a symbol on his left chest. Miss Scarlet. You can't imagine how grateful we are for your gracious help even though it's an insignificant matter to you. He spoke with utmost respect. Don't worry about it, Captain. I wanted to help my friend's younger brother with his training. You won't mind, right? A. Absolutely not. He almost gulped a mouthful of saliva because of her cold gaze. She was speaking normally to him but everyone present knew that she was ordering him around and her respectful words were nothing but a facade. Then, the three people walked out of the gates. Outside the city, there were vast lands of greenery that surrounded the city walls. It was quite a beautiful sight. However, this was ruined by what was happening not so far from the walls. A group of people was fighting three kobolds. The kobolds were jumping left and right avoiding the swords and spears of the hunters. Hey! Use your gift and stop them from moving. One of them shouted at another. Then, the man tried to activate his gift but the kobolds saw it and instantly focused on him. The three monsters ran ferociously and jumped at the poor man intending to kill him. But, before any of them could react. A silhouette appeared out of nowhere and kicked one of them to the ground. He then pointed at the other two and they instantly fell down like their friend. In a moment, he suppressed three kobolds easily. The man was shocked beyond words but he regained enough of his composure to look at the person and ask him, Who, are you? You don't need to know. Now, retreat with your friends and let me deal with them. You are in the way. The person answered with a cold look. It was obviously act. When they reached the place and saw the hard fight, Scarlet asked him to go and kill them alone. She intended for him to fight every kobold without any assistance from her. 
he didn't feel any fear of these creatures even though this was the first time he saw them in real life. A weak insect is a weak insect no matter how it looks, he thought. The group of hunters was about to argue with the cocky kid that appeared but the high dot pitched cry of the kobold cut them off. They looked at the struggling monsters with shock. I said leave. Act spoke again with anger. The hunters didn't dwindle anymore and ran away as fast as they could. When Act was sure they were far enough, he shifted his gaze towards the monsters. His gravity gift was working great at suppressing them but that won't be for long since they were struggling greatly and he felt his powers weaken gradually. Now, how should I kill these things? I don't want to make a mess, he thought briefly before shaking his head and deactivating his gift. The monsters were released so they stood up and dashed toward Act with great fury. Rhea. They wanted to shred him to pieces but the kid couldn't bother less with their killing intent. Come at me. I hope you enjoyed the chapter. Don't forget to support this book. Thank you and have a good day. 17 Chapter 17 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The three kobolds ran madly toward Act with their sharp claws ready to dice him up into pieces. Even though they were merely G. rank monsters, they could still kill normal humans fairly easily and even heavily injure rookie hunters. So, underestimating them is not an option if someone wants to keep their lives. The first kobold reached Act and smashed down with its hand on him. Its speed was slightly above what humans could do so it could appear blurry to many. But, for Act, it was merely a slow dot motion attack from a weak enemy. He moved to the side swiftly and avoided the attack, then, he pulled his sword and slashed horizontally. His sword cut the left arm of the kobold as if it was a piece of butter and sent it flying. Rayara. The kobold screamed in extreme pain as blood gushed out of its arm like a fountain. It tried to kick Act in its stupor but Act was already a step ahead of it and he stabbed with his sword toward its chest. Swish before he could end its life, the other two kobolds reached him and jumped at him. Act clicked his tongue and activated his gift. Instantly, the two creatures fell down like rag dolls and stuck to the ground like glue because of the increased gravity. He didn't intend to kill them with only his gift, he only wanted to stop their dash and get some time to kill the first one. While holding them off, Act moved swiftly and stabbed the first kobold. He could have left it alone and it would have died from the huge loss of blood but he wanted to do the task perfectly and not create a bloody mess. Rhea. The kobold was very tenacious, it wouldn't go down without a fight. It tried to grab Act but he was faster. With one swift move, the short sword stabbed its chest right through its heart. It tried to shake it away or resist but it soon lost strength and died on the spot. Act then shifted his concentration to the two left, they already nullified his powers and were standing still looking at him. They weren't smart or sane but their instincts alone told them that the human in front of them was very dangerous. If you won't come at me, then I will come to you. He said with a calm, emotionless tone. He dashed toward them like a flash, then he used his momentum to jump and stab toward one of the monsters. While he was in the air, he activated his gift and added gravity to his body making his landing even faster and his speed even scarier. The kobolds didn't expect this and found themselves unable to dodge. Swish the sword drove through the first one creating a big hole in its stomach. Act then quickly pulled the sword and slashed horizontally to the side. The blade made a beautiful arc before slicing through the side of the kobold all the way to the center of its abdomen. The two monsters screamed in extreme pain and fell down dead a few seconds after. In just one minute, Act killed the three monsters without getting a scratch. It was a one-dot-sided massacre rather than a fight since the monsters couldn't do anything to him. Act then pulled his sword from the kobold and made a light swing to get rid of the blood on the blade before putting it again in the scabbard. That was easier than expected but still enjoyable, he thought as he took a deep breath before looking at Scarlet. She also looked at him, but with deep surprise in her pupils. She was not expecting anything from what happened. I knew he would be able to kill them, but this, this is scary. 
she thought as she inspected the kid in front of her. At first, she got interested in him because of his affinity with a lost element yet deep down in her heart she thought he would be an average person in all the other aspects. However, not even two days passed and she was already questioning whether he was really a child or not. He didn't even flinch when killing those monsters. Was this really his first time killing a living creature? Miss Scarlet. He spoke to her with a confused gaze. Did I overdo it? He pondered worriedly. Looking back at himself, he did indeed show too much of his skills but he wasn't thinking about it since he was concentrated on killing the monsters. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yes, I was just thinking about something. You did, an amazing job over there. She shook her head and spoke with a small frown on her face. Good. Are these all the monsters? The captain of the guards was the one to answer. N. No, there are still a few of them near the southern forest. He was also shocked beyond words at such a talent and cold. Heartedness, but he didn't want to offend Scarlet or the scary kid, so he tried to calm down. Should I deal with them, Miss Scarlet? He looked at the red dot haired beauty waiting for her answer. I will let you kill them. But before that, I will show you how to collect the soul stones of the kobolds. Soul stones. Yes, every living creature has a soul stone where their soul force is stored. They are also the only way for humans to absorb the soul force of other creatures and evolve. She then approached the three dead monsters and pulled out a knife. Then, with swift and precise moves, she opened a hole around the solar plexus of the creature's body. The blood kept on gushing out non-stop but Scarlet didn't bother with it and put her hand inside the monster. Then, she pulled out a small object the size of a peanut from the monster. The object was glowing faintly with a blue color. It was akin to a diamond that shines even with blood covering it. This is a soul stone. It's small in size because kobolds are weak G. rank monsters but with each rank, the soul stones get bigger and bigger. She tossed the object to act so he could take a look at it. He grabbed it and pressed on it. It was quite sturdy in contrast to its fragile look. Okay, now. I want you to extract the soul stones out of the other two bodies. The soul stone is always situated in the middle of the abdomen no matter what creature we are talking about. Keep that in mind. A cat nodded briefly before grabbing the knife and imitating Scarlet's moves. He took a little bit longer than her to get the soul stone out but he nevertheless was able to do it. He then repeated the same process with the last monster. In total, he had three soul stones in his hand that looked identical but with small variations in size. Very good. I will show you later how to absorb them. We should continue now. Scarlet and Act continued walking and behind them was the captain who felt out of place with two geniuses walking in front of him. He was debating whether he should excuse himself and leave or not. The southern forest was rather big in size, it was comparable to the size of Blue Rise City and it was rumored to be filled with all kinds of creatures. Fortunately or not, most of the monsters who lurk inside the forest never leave so the city was never threatened by a monster stampede or any sort of danger. The three people reached the outskirts of the forest in a few minutes. They weren't intending to enter the forest since the kobolds were somewhere around the place they were standing at. I can't feel any presence around here. Are they really here, thought Act as he looked left and right with his hand on his short sword. You can't feel their presence. Kobolds are known for their decent hiding skills. Scarlet spoke with a low voice. She then closed her eyes for a brief second and opened them again before continuing, there is only one way to feel their presence. You should try and detect their soul forces. How do I do that? Close your eyes and try to feel the soul energy around you. She instructed him. I want you to try and look for any weird fluctuations in the energy around us. That's probably where the kobolds are hiding. Act followed her words and concentrated on his surroundings. After some search, he was able to find what she told him. There were a few ripples a few tens of meters away from them behind a big tree. 
I saw it. There behind that tree. Act opened his eyes and pointed at the place. Good. Scarlet nodded her head with satisfaction. She then left Act to deal with them and spoke to the captain. Where is the dungeon that these monsters got out of? She asked with a calm look. I hope you enjoyed the chapter. Don't forget to support this book. Thank you and have a good day. 18 Chapter 18 You are listening at NovelFull.audio There is no need for why the captain of the guards tried to answer but he was cut off harshly by Scarlet. Where is the dungeon? Her voice was cold and emotionless with a hint of anger. He gulped down a mouthful of saliva in fear and replied with a stuttering and meek voice. I doubt it's, it's in that direction. Scarlet then ignored him completely and looked at Act. He was already finishing off the last kobold. They were scared of him in the first place so even though there were eight kobolds in total, they didn't want to fight him which made things easier for the boy. After killing them off, he extracted the soul stones from their bodies and returned to Scarlet. He then handed her the stones and said. Those are the last ones. I checked for anyone hiding nearby or running away but I didn't feel anything. I could only feel a 10 dot meter radius around me so I don't know if one of them ran away or not though. That's fine. With each level, the area you could scan around you also increases. She answered before looking at the stones for a few seconds. Then, she shifted her gaze to look at Act and asked, would you like to enter the dungeon and clear it up? She didn't want to order him around just because she was his trainer. She believed that he should make his own choices since she won't be with him forever. The Cobalt Dungeon Yes, I know its location. So, would you like to enter it? It's your choice, we can also call it a day and then go back. Hmm, let's continue. I will have to enter a dungeon sooner or later anyway. He answered not so long after. There was no point in pondering over it, killing more kobolds means more soul stones and more soul stones means more soul force to absorb for him. W. Wait, Miss Scarlet. He isn't a hunter, he can't enter a dungeon. It's really danger. I will go with him. Am I not enough to protect him in a G. Rank dungeon? She asked with a glare. A. Absolutely not. He shook his head vigorously. She didn't speak anymore and started walking away with Act. It was as if she was telling him not to follow her anymore. The captain understood the gesture and sighed loudly before walking away with a sad look. He wanted to gain the favor of a big shot like Scarlet but he ended up making her angry. The duo walked for a few minutes in silence, Act was wiping the blood from his clothes and his sword while Scarlet kept looking around for some reason. That's the kobold's dungeon. She pointed at a big cave on a small hill near the forest. She then sat down and pulled out the soul stones. But first, I will show you how to absorb these soul stones. Come and sit down in front of me. She tapped the grass in front of her as she spoke. Act then sat down and took the soul stones from her hand. Try to feel the energy inside of them. Then, I want you to guide that energy out of the stones just like how you channel your soul force when you want to use it. Act followed her instructions and the energy quickly started sipping out of the stones and into his body. In a few seconds, the blue color of the stones disappeared and turned into a dull gray color. We should go now. We should finish before sunset. The two then approached the big cave entrance. It was very dark inside but not too dark so they could see clearly. One rule before we enter. Whenever you enter a dungeon you should always expect the worse. Dungeons are still a mystery to us and the cases of dungeon abnormalities that killed hunters aren't rare. Never underestimate these places, okay? Understood. He nodded his head while keeping his eyes on the dark entrance. Then, they both walked inside. The eerie silence of the dungeon with the occasional sound of water dripping from the ceiling made the atmosphere creepy and uncomfortable. Keep your eyes on any movement in the shadows. Most monsters never choose a direct confrontation. 
she whispered to act. They both kept walking through the darkness as the tunnel kept getting smaller and smaller until it was only one meter above their heads. Then, a loud sound of a monster screaming reached their ears. The sound was coming from the front. It was the sound of a kobold. To be more precise, it was the sound of two kobolds but it was quite different from the ones they both heard outside. The duo then kept walking while Act pulled out his sword, ready for any sneak attack. A few seconds later, they finally saw the monsters. What? Their eyes widened in surprise. The two kobolds weren't fighting or even communicating. They were, copulating. The male kobold held the female and did all kinds of things to her body while totally ignoring the fact that two humans watched him in action. The scene was disgusting, to say the least. Two ugly things were mating loudly without a care in the world, even Act felt disgusted by such a sight. He then instantly pulled a knife out and threw it at them. The knife flew like a bullet and struck the male kobold right in the head, killing him instantly. When she felt her partner die, the female kobold finally woke up from her euphoria and saw the two humans who killed her male. She then screeched loudly and tried to charge at them in fury. But, Act was faster by a step, he pulled his sword and dashed towards her. He then bent to the side and made a diagonal cut with the blade. The sword cut open her abdomen and caused a huge injury that reached her chest. The kobold screamed in agony before falling to the ground and dying in her own blood. What an abomination to see, this will make it even awkward to continue hunting. He didn't know whether to laugh or cry at such stupid luck. He then took a peek at Scarlet. At first, one would think she looked normal but Act saw it clearly, she had a hint of red on her cheeks. Don't blush like that. You are making it even more awkward for me. He wanted to blurt out these words but decided not to do so or she will probably kill him on the spot. Ahem, I will get the soul stones and we can continue. He said with a light cough to diffuse the suffocating silence. Okay. Then both of them started walking again, no one spoke to the other as they tried to shake off the horrible memory that lived rent-free in their minds right now. Act would have rather chosen to see a massacre of millions of people happening in front of him rather than seeing two kobolds have sex again. It was that bad. Then, for the next hour, the duo faced many monsters on their way. They weren't wandering around in big groups so Act was able to deal with them pretty easily. The tunnel they were walking in seemed to be endless at first but soon, they saw the end. Hmm, is this the end? He asked Scarlet. No, there is still the dungeon boss left. It's the strongest creature in the dungeon and it resides in the last chamber of the dungeon. She then walked to the end of the tunnel and continued, the boss in this dungeon is the kobold chief. It's the strongest kobold out of them. You have to be careful while dealing with it. I know. Let's go inside. He answered with a nonchalant look. The last chamber of the dungeon had a stone door closing it so they had to push it open in order to enter. It didn't seem easy since the door weighed 70 kilograms. When Scarlet was about to touch it. Act spoke again, wait. What? She tilted her head with confusion. I want to try something. He answered. He then approached the door and tapped on it. He then activated his gift. Suddenly, the door started making sounds as if it was opening up. Then, in one movement, the door pried open. It seems that I can also push things away with my power. Gravity is full of surprises. I can't wait to see what other things I could do with it. He thought with a satisfied gaze. He was discovering new things about his element every day. He felt as if he was opening a present full of surprises. What he didn't know, however, was that it wasn't all because of the gift but because of his talent. No one could become that good at controlling his powers in such a short time. But, his lack of common sense made it impossible for him to see that he was an anomaly. I hope you enjoyed the chapter. Don't forget to support this book. Thank you and have a good day. 19 Chapter 19 You are listening at NovelFull.audio 
Scarlet looked at Act who was standing there calmly as if nothing happened. She felt her emotions go chaotic. You, sigh. She tapped her forehead as if she was suffering from a painful headache. She then walked to him and looked him in the eyes with an extremely serious look. Listen, act. From the moment I decided to help you as a part of our deal, I tried to build some kind of trust between us, and to be honest, I have some things I can't wrap my head around when it comes to you. You are just full of mysteries. She then took a deep breath to collect herself and continued, I get that you want to have your secrets and that's totally fine, but, let me tell you this, your talent and skills are amazing to the point where it scares me sometimes. You don't seem to understand that what you're doing is by no means average or even something that geniuses of this world could pull off. Act widened his eyes slightly in surprise and looked at Scarlet who seemed to be having a conflict inside of her. She was never someone to lose composure no matter what situation it was but she somehow seemed to lose that trait of hers whenever Act was involved. I, see. So please, I want you to understand that this lack of common sense of yours could be your ticket to the afterlife. Act nodded his head with some remorse in his eyes. In both of his lives, he sought perfection in everything he does and his skills made it easier for him to live up to those standards he set for himself. But, he was in the end a human being who was bound to make mistakes and this was one of those cases. So, he didn't know how to deal with this fault of his except for doing one thing. I apologize for the inconvenience. I indeed have some secrets that I don't want anyone to know and I still can't tell you these things since we knew each other for only a few days. I will take your words to heart, Miss Scarlet. He said without looking at her directly. Even with his prideful attitude, he felt the need to apologize in that situation or guilt would linger in his heart. It was indeed a very weird situation. Dot what he didn't know is that the old him would have never apologized in this situation. But, Act was going through a change, a change that was so minuscule that he didn't perceive. Good. I hope you don't act carelessly like this again. She tapped on his shoulder lightly before turning around to look at the chamber. There were no sounds coming from inside even though the door was fully open. However, the atmosphere inside was even more suffocating than the outside so both of them were pretty sure the chief was inside. Are you ready? I won't be helping unless the situation becomes dangerous. I'm ready. Then, they both walked inside slowly, Axe's sword was already in his hand and his eyes kept wandering around endlessly. At first, nothing happened. The dark room was quiet and not even the presence of the chief could be felt. But, before Act could get suspicious, a loud scream that shook the whole chamber reached his ears and made him close his eye in pain. The scream was so loud that it threatened to break his ears. Its teeth were razor-dot-sharp and its massive mouth could swallow Act in one gulp. It was indeed a creature that walked out of a person's worst nightmares. Act however, didn't feel intimidated at all by this monster. He was aware that it was stronger than normal kobolds but that was it. It was in the end a brainless monster. The monster didn't wait for the humans and charged toward them like a raging bull ready to squash them like ants. The duo didn't wait either and jumped in different directions, leaving the charging chief to pass and smash into the wall roughly. War. The monster was angry that its initial attack didn't work so it shook itself and looked at the smaller prey out of the two which was act. The kobold wanted to get rid of the smaller human since it looked weaker and then deal with Scarlet, who it saw as the real threat. Act didn't wait for it and used all of his soul force in activating gravity. He applied all of it on the monster and pushed it away making it stumble to the ground. Then, he charged at it and jumped on top of its body. The monster tried to grab Act with his left hand but Act jumped over it and ran on his arm until he reached his face. He wanted to stab one of his eyes since they were one of the few obvious weak points of this behemoth of a creature. The sword moved swiftly toward his left eye but the monster was quick enough to stand on his feet and shake off act. The boy fell down from the monster's shoulder and tried to adjust his posture in the middle of the air. The monster saw this opening and tried to slap act with his hand. Damn it! 
Act clicked his tongue as he pointed his sword in the direction of the upcoming hand. He could evade it if he pushed himself with his gift but he didn't have time to do so, so the only choice left was what he was doing. The hand clashed with the sword making the blade pierce the flesh of the monster's hand. The kobold felt the pain from the hit but it didn't stop. Act then grabbed the sword tightly and supported his feet on the hand before pushing the sword inside as hard as he could. The momentum of the hit could have sent him flying but he used the sword to stay stuck to his hand, evading imminent death. Rhea. The kobold understood what happened and tried to pull Act away. The latter was faster in his reaction as he hurriedly pulled his sword out and jumped away to make distance between them. That was a close call. This fucker is quite tricky. He thought as he cracked his fingers lightly. He felt his arms almost break from the impact and his fingers felt sore from his hard grip on the handle. The monster was no better than act, its hand was bleeding a lot and it was outraged because of the tenacious human in front of it. Both of them looked at each other for a brief moment before they both ran at each other at the same time. The difference in size made the confrontation outrageous. A monster over seven meters tall was fighting a small, weak-looking kid. The creature stopped abruptly and smashed down with its hand. Act had to jump to the side to avoid it. The hand hit the ground and created a hole in the hard stone. If Act was late by even a mere millisecond, he could have turned into a flat piece of paper. Rhea. Shut up. You are noisy. Act muttered with a cold look and activated his gift again. He had an idea in mind but he wasn't sure if it would work or not. But, he was ready to take on that gamble since he could make a distance between them if things came to the worst. He then pointed his hand to the ceiling while running around the monster. He had a slightly hard time evading his attacks while also doing what he was intending to do. The fight kept on going for a few more minutes where Act only evaded the chief while the latter kept on chasing him around the place frantically. It was akin to a game of cat and mouse albeit more dangerous. Come on. I'm close. He muttered with beads of sweat trickling down his small face. Then, when he saw that he did it, he changed his direction and ran toward one of the walls on the side. He halted his steps and turned around with an emotionless gaze and stared directly at the charging monster as if he was provoking it. The chief didn't think much of it and kept on running towards him madly. Checkmate. Act muttered before making a gesture with his finger pointing down to the ground. Suddenly, a massive and pointy stone stuck to the ceiling shook violently before falling down. The monster was directly under the massive boulder so it couldn't evade it. Boom the impact made the place shake as if it was hit by an earthquake. A huge cloud of dust covered the place of the impact. Act stood in his place not moving an inch. He wasn't sure of its death and he couldn't afford to make a mishap at such a critical moment. Then, after the dust dissipated, he saw what happened clearly. The monster was on the ground, bathing in his own blood with a massive rock piercing its head. Its brain got obliterated. The monster got killed instantly without even being able to scream. Phew. That was unexpectedly tiresome. Act thought with a tired look. It was indeed a close fight. I hope you enjoyed the chapter. Don't forget to support this book. Thank you and have a good day. 20 Chapter 20 You are listening at NovelFull.audio You did an amazing job there, Act. Said Scarlet as she approached him with a small smile on her face. She was amazed at how he was able to use his surroundings to his advantage and kill the chief. Fighting is not always about direct confrontation and raw power. Sometimes, what makes the difference is the intelligence to exploit everything around you to come out victorious. This comes in handy when the fight is between two equal opponents. Act nodded his head in approval and looked at the dead chief before pulling a knife and walking towards it. Do you really think that knife could open up his body? I know. I wanted to see if I could use gravity to make it work. He answered, that could work but you could also strengthen your knife with your soul force. It's much more efficient to do so. 
Act didn't think of that idea since he thought that it wasn't possible or it was just not practical but it seemed to not be the case. He then looked at the weapon and tried to channel his soul force into the weapon. Crack a few seconds after he sent his energy to the knife, the blade started vibrating followed by a cracking sound. The knife was broken. Why didn't it work? He muttered with a confused look. That's because you overcharged the knife. These kinds of objects can't handle the soul force and could get destroyed easily. You need to control the amount you use so it doesn't shatter to pieces. Scarlet answered as she stood beside him. I see. But, how could I know the appropriate amount of energy I need to use? It depends on the object you are trying to strengthen. Generally, the bigger the object is the more soul force it could bear. For this knife, though, use the least amount you could properly control. Act listened to her explanation while also trying to apply what he understood. He was still not extremely familiar with soul force so the amount he was able to control wasn't very small, since any less than that and it starts dissipating in the air. Luckily enough, his attempt succeeded. The knife didn't shake or get destroyed, it only got a little bit heavier. Act felt as if it became a part of his body like an arm or a leg. He then approached the chief and stabbed his chest. His thick skin resisted at first but soon enough, the knife cut through it and pierced his flesh. He then continued his work swiftly. When he extracted the soul stone, he was slightly surprised at the size. It was almost the size of his head which was incomparable to the other kobolds. This was to show the difference between normal mobs and a dungeon boss. When you return to the city, you can absorb the soul stones you harvested. They should be more than enough for you to level up once or twice. Then, they left the dungeon and returned to the city. They didn't meet the captain at the gates and they didn't bother to look for him either. Then, they separated and entered their personal rooms. Act was slightly exhausted and also dirty so he wanted to rest for the day since he will return to training tomorrow. The day passed quietly without many problems. Act spent most of it sleeping to restore his energy. The next day, he met again with Scarlet. They still had a lot to do and many things for Act to learn so they went straight to the training capsules. Act continued with his initial task which was lifting a huge rock in the air for five minutes. He was making fast progress so he was able to finish the task the next day. Then, they passed to other things. Scarlet made the boy practice the prolonged use of gravity on his body. I want you to levitate yourself in the air. But, I want you to be barely hovering a few millimeters above the ground so that no one could see that you were not walk.ing. Keep that activated for as long as you can. It was pretty hard at first but he was able to get the gist of it soon enough. Envy. And just like that, three weeks passed in a flash. Throughout this time, Scarlet and Act were together for the most part of the day. They were able to grow a bond between them that none of them could feel. They trusted each other to a certain degree. The reason is probably because they were similar in many aspects of their personalities and beliefs. On the last day of their deal, they didn't go to the training but instead went to the restaurant near the hotel. Both of them had mixed feelings about what was going to happen. But, it was a deal and they had no other choice but to see it until the end. So, how was it? Scarlet asked as they sat down. You helped me a lot. Act responded briefly before looking outside the window for a brief moment. The atmosphere was too awkward for him. He didn't know why but he was slightly annoyed at the moment. He had spent some time with Scarlet and had a good idea about who she was as a person. She was cold, aloof, and emotionless at times but deep down she was a kind, respectful and smart woman who didn't falter no matter what. In a sense, she was the opposite of Act. He was a cold person who killed with cold blood and never felt any benevolence toward his victims. He was a killer, a monster, and a rejected human in society. But, even in that dark, disgusting shithole, he found light, a warm light that made him regain some of his lost feelings. That person had restored a part of his humanity and made him believe that life had a meaning somewhere. 
this was the second time he felt that same feeling with another person. It made him confused but he didn't hate that. I see, sigh, beating around the bush is not my thing after all. So, what is your choice? Are you going to accept my offer or not? Scarlet was also having the same train of thoughts. She didn't hate being with Act this whole time. He was cold, mysterious, and sometimes overly mature for his age. But, he was also a very honest, straightforward, and mature person who didn't care about her appearance or social status. Since you were straightforward with your question, I will answer honestly. He then took a deep breath and looked at her in the eyes. I, still can't join your family. He said as he averted his eyes slightly before shaking his head and looking at her again seriously. I know that you are disappointed for wasting three weeks of your time with me. But, I still can't do it. I cherish my freedom more than anything else and I can't entertain the idea of being held off by someone or something. That I see. Scarlet nodded her head and sighed quietly with a slightly sad look. I guess there is nothing I could do about it. However, don't think that I wasted my time here. I actually enjoyed the past three weeks training you. The atmosphere around them became less awkward as they ate their food. Then, they stood up and left. So, when are you going to leave for Lagradon? She asked as they marched through the streets. I was thinking of buying some necessities for the trip and then leaving tomorrow or the day after it. I also need to leave tomorrow too. I left my responsibilities for way too long, I think this is where we should separate. She halted her steps and looked at him. Yes, I think so. It was nice meeting you, Scarlet. It was the first time he called her without honorifics and it felt bizarre but also not so bad. Me too. I am sure we will meet again in the future. I will be starting to work as a professor at the Golden Soul Academy next year. I hope I can see you attend it in a few years. I will try to do so if I can. I have to go now. They then shook hands and walked in separate ways, not looking back. Each one of them had different goals but fate made them meet by pure coincidence and share a good time together. Act was glad he made a good acquaintance in this world that could help him when he needed it. On the other side though, Scarlet took a turn in a deserted alley and halted her steps. She then slowly leaned on one of the walls. Her face was abnormal. She didn't have her familiar cold look, but rather a weird, chilling smile that could make anyone shudder. Her cheeks were red and her eyes were moist. She looked as if she was experiencing the best feeling in the world. Ha 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 ha. She then started laughing loudly without caring. Her eyes had a particular, predatory shine in them that she never had. She then put her finger on her beautiful lips and muttered a few words without anyone hearing them. We will surely meet again, my cute little act, end of volume 1, I hope you enjoyed the chapter. Don't forget to support this book. Thank you and have a good day.